I can't wait to show you the five under five dollar thrifted DIYs I have that are going to go with this rustic fence project that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. I asked around for some weathered wood and a friend of mine had these panels in their yard sitting there waiting for someone to take them away. So her husband helped my hubby get three of the panels so that we had enough to do what I wanted to do. So we started by just leaning them up against the wired fence that we have just to see what we wanted to do with them. So I'm not going to lie, hubby did all of this work for me because I had been so weak last summer that I wasn't able to do a lot with my arms and my hands. I didn't have the strength. Okay, here's the fence I'll put up. Hubby was so amazing to do this for me. I know it doesn't look like much right now and you're thinking, what the heck is she doing? Why is she putting this up here? We have all of this area here that is open space and you can see how open our yard is, right? So it's beautiful and all, um, but we do rent and we can't put up anything on it, but I am doing my cute little wall fence. So I have something for outdoor to decorate. <laughs> and we sit out here close by this, so it'll be so cute. It's just really pretty and just, I love the old wood. And I had picked up this candle holder several years ago and we used it in our front porch for a little bit. But it looks perfect here with my new uh, insulators that I picked up. And I think the sun will come in and shine on them really well. So look at how much character this fence has and when I'm done with it, it's gonna look so amazing. And now next is I'm going to show you that I'm gonna be painting, you know, here and there, different spots, um, just with a dry brush. Okay, we're gonna try it on this one here that's the closest. So we're just going to do this. See what I mean? How it just barely gets on there. And you can barely see it. And I'll go over it a couple of times so that it pops out. Okay, I got it all done. And I think it brightened it up quite a bit in this corner. See how the white's coming through but not all the way and it still looks weathered? so that it looks like the paint was always there and the weather just kind of wore it off. So I wanted to have that white background to it to, for one, brighten it up and another to kind of give it more character and, and make it look prettier. What do you think? I'm not done yet, so I'm gonna be decorating soon. So stay tuned. I thought it would be fun to be a part of this collaboration again. It's five DIYs under $5. And the playlists will be listed down below, so you'll want to check out each video and please comment on my video as well as theirs and let them know that you're there. And I want to thank Farm Charm Chic for hosting and having happiness created as the guest host. Okay, now for our DIYs. This one, I picked up this wreath base. Uh, form. Uh, it's natural kind of branch type thing that you can find at Walmart and I don't I know that Dollar Tree used to have them but I'm not sure if they still do but you just want to take it apart and I've done a similar thing like this at um, fall time for a pumpkin and you'll want to see that video I'll have it linked above. But basically, I'm just trying to loosen them to kind of fluff it, and I'm trying to form it to make a half moon wreath. And so I first started out with this amount, but then I fluffed it up more at the end um, so that it was bigger for the end of the video. But you just want to take wire and loosely uh, tie that together so it holds it together because you don't want to lose the fluffy. Um, fluffiness of it. So now in the area where I want to put the moss I'm just hot gluing it down with um, 
Gorilla hot glue and just putting it kind of like nesting it there like it it landed there while the moon was hanging <laughs> and now I picked this up at um, Joann's I think I paid 250 for it on clearance but I use you know little pieces here and there of it so I don't even know how much this would actually end up being but I only use a few pieces so it's very minimal and so I'm just hot gluing this greenery and you can use Dollar Tree greenery um, they do have a lot of cute leafy type greenery that you could put on this or if you want to go all out with flowers and and put it on that would look super cute for color to brighten it up and this is going on my wall area so I want it to kind of look a little natural and to not be so bright because I have other things that I want to do for the bright colors so I'm just gluing it all down and this is all going to be in a shaded area so the the sun and heat won't um, melt that glue and I do want to say you can make any size wreath so whatever size wreath you buy you can make them smaller you can make them bigger and look like Walmart has several sizes available and also you can put a hanger on the top to hang it from something and there it is now this next DIY I got this free on uh, classifieds here locally from a lady that was getting rid of it but you can always find these at the thrift store you know single chairs or even a bunch of chairs for an inexpensive price here at our Deseret Industries and I'm not sure about other thrift stores but I'm sure you can always find them on the side of the road I always see furniture on the side of the road also check your local Facebook marketplace so I just actually painted a couple of coats of it and then distressed it and it was finished it turned out so pretty wait and see I found this envelope wall hanger at the thrift store and I paid I think a dollar for it and I thought I could use it for something and it came to mind when I was doing my wall that it would be a cute flower holder and I purchased this um, I think it's called coconut liner and you can buy those at the Dollar Tree as well and Dollar Tree has um, alternative ways that you could do this similar style uh, and I'll show you pictures above but I want to incorporate the fact that you can use just about anything for this so what I end up doing is putting some newspaper on the bottom and I just save foam and I just had it on hand but you can also get that at the Dollar Tree okay it's not pretty but I have it stuffed with some newspaper and then some cheap foam that I've saved on the top so we can get the flowers in there okay there it is and you'll see it all hung up when I'm all done cute huh <laughs> you all have probably already seen this project before but I wanted to include it into this video because it matches the chair so you can use Dollar Tree bath mats for this project and I purchased a drop cloth for $10 and I used a minimal piece here and you can use any stencil for this plaid sells them at uh, Michaels or Walmart I believe and it is just a transfer type stencil and this one just happened to be one that I had had on hand and it just says bloom but you can use single letters uh, for the stencil as well so I'm just centering this on as best I can on that uh, piece of drop cloth and how I did the drop cloth is ripping it so that it has rough edges so now I'm just using the chalk uh, transfer paste on here um, plaid sells this as well in all of their craft stores and I'm doing an ombre type of a thing so I'm doing um, darker and then lighter to give it that ombre look and it turned out super cute when you remove the stencil from your project just go really slow with it I sped it up for this video 
Now I think Dollar Tree has similar stencils that are just single one line type things like this. And I stuck my finger right into the wet paint. I kind of messed that part up, but I kind of fixed it too. <laughs> so I just put that trim along each end and it turns out super pretty. Here I'm cutting and trimming down the rug, but the Dollar Tree rugs, you don't have to do this. And I think they're just the same exact size without having to cut anything down. This rug has the, the fringe on the ends of it, and you can also purchase fringe for not too much um, if you want to add it to it, but I'm suggesting just to go with the Dollar Tree to keep it within the $5. So I flipped one side over to the other side so that it had fringe on both sides. And then now I'm using fabric uh, hot glue so it will stay together a lot longer and it should withstand washing it but to be careful when you dry it um, and I'm just doing like opposite sides so when you turn it over you can't see the seam also if you could sew if you know how to sew it would probably last a lot longer if you did sew it down so now that it's glued I'm just flipping it over so the right side is out and then I'll use that same glue to glue the front of the bloom part on all the way around. So now I'm gluing the other side over and when I do I have to flip it so it has a seam on it if that makes sense because you're doing it um, from the right side inward and you want it to look seamless so there isn't any fraying or anything. And it's pretty simple. And then on the ends, it's a finished edge. So I just went through and glued one side and had a finished edge there. And I didn't have to turn it under if that makes sense. And then now I get to stuff the pillow. So then I just use the same glue to do the same thing I did on the other side to close it up. And this side will be harder to keep it closed. So I use some Dollar Tree clamps to hold it down until it was dried and wait till you see it on my chair. This next project is something that I made up myself and I've had this basket for a long time and I got it at the thrift store for 50 cents. And you can get similar ones at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. And I just cut the bottom off and I'm saving that. And I got these tart trays um, or pans, little miniature ones at the thrift store three for a dollar so that makes it 33 cents for one and I'm only using one and I am not sure why I did this next step because you really don't need to do that but I did end up gluing it with some Gorilla Super Glue together and it was kind of sticky and messy after even after it was kind of dried <laughs> I sat this on and let it dry for a few hours and came back to it, but it still moved around. So you might want to just skip that step. <laughs> so now I'm just taking my uh, wire cutters and cutting around the top of the basket because I don't need the ring part of it. I just want the mesh. And I'm saving the ring in case I want it for another project. So see, it looks like it's all secure and everything. And now I'm just measuring petals uh, because we're making a cute little flower for the garden or for the yard. And I'm just measuring where I want it to be cut. At first I thought I wanted small and big pieces, but I didn't have enough to do both uh, for this project with just one basket. So I ended up doing all of them this same size as what's here. And it still, it turned out super cute. So then I just 
used the one on the left as a template and went through and did them like back and forth so that there was enough room to make enough for the complete flower. So I'm just measuring out how many I needed and I cut just enough. Um, I used one that I had already previously cut that I just kind of fixed, but it turned out even and I didn't have to worry about it. So now I'm taking a long piece of wire and I measured where I want um, all of those uh, petals to go. And I am taking the wire now and weaving it in and out of the of each of the mesh petals so that it will be kind of like cinching up into a circle and I'm connecting them as I go. So now that it's all cinched up and everything, I tied it so that it would move and now I am measuring it there. It looks perfect. So I'm going to attach it with the wire through the uh, holes of the center piece so that it stays on to the petal stay onto the middle. And this first one I did really tight and I just wove it through each of the holes um, just a little bit on one side and then I did two other sides so that it was even. And then I just made sure to trim down all the wires. So a hubby helped me by drilling the hole and this is why you shouldn't bother to glue it. You should probably just drill the hole first and then put it all together later. And he had a nut and bolt that we could put together on it and hold it in place. I did end up changing out the, the bolt though because it matched the flower better. But there you go. So now I get to paint it and I'm painting the center part, the truffle or truffle paint. Um, and I'm doing two coats of the truffle on it and letting it dry in between, but I'm not getting it in the very center. And I didn't want it to be exact because um, it's yard art and it's just, you know, flowers aren't uh, exact. so. I was kind of trying to be artistic. <laughs> so I did the real bright yellow paint on that outer portion. And this is why I didn't paint the center because I wanted to do some red, some bright imperial red from plaid and just kind of like had it blend kind of throughout and make it kind of look a little messy. And then this is some pumpkin paste that I have that you can get online as well um, and it's kind of more sunflowery color so I thought I'd do all the leaves that color so then I thought it would be pretty because I accidentally put some on the edge of the yellow and that made it more ombre look so I went all the way around the center part edges with this color too so it would pop out and make it look more dimensional and and kind of blend in really well. And then I touched up later. <laughs> so now I'm putting that bright color yellow dots all through, kind of like a sunflower, so that you can, you know, have that popping out as well. So then I thought it would be pretty to just put the center uh, petals that bright yellow as well to have the petals pop out and look more dimensional as well and then with that same red to bring that all together and have the red come out more I 
just did the edges with that red, uh, imperial red, and it turned out really cute with that. So now the stem portion, I've got this dowel that I've had from, uh, I think I found a crib panel on the side of the road and that was uh, one of those. And so I'm painting it with the moss chalk paint. I did two coats on it and to protect the wood more when it's outside. And it was really hard to distress, but it's still distressed where I wanted it to. I just had to give it some elbow grease. <laughs> but I distressed all of it so that it would look really cute. So then I just took some thicker wire and I'm going to attach the flower portion to the stem and kind of making sure it looked on the decent side in the front. And I just wove it through the wire uh, mesh part and tied it really good onto that portion and then um, I think I even knotted it and then to attach it I just stuck it on top of that little part that um, is cut out there and grooved and then put it through again through the mesh part and tied it to the bottom part of that groove. It's hard to explain what that is the part of the wood there. And I just made sure to trim all the excess wire and push it down. So to protect it from the weather elements, I put this two times clear Rust-Oleum spray on and it's more of a mat uh, when it dries. And I did two coats of this so that that paint won't come off. And one thing I want to mention is I use chalk paint specifically uh, because I've used acrylics for outside before. Even with the, the uh, protectant spray, it still would wash it just right off. So that's why I use chalk. Well, that's my five under five dollar projects from thrifted to fabulous. I hope you enjoyed them all. As well as the, the wall. I hope that you love my little nook corner here and everything that I put in it. And all of these items are thrifted items and either I've changed them up a little bit or I've left them how they are and just hung them up and added a few things to them. And so please make sure to watch the playlist down below and don't forget to comment on everyone's videos and also please share my video and like it. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate everyone who has made it this far through the video and welcome if you are new to my channel. I hope that you will subscribe and continue to watch my videos. I do a lot of thrift flips and thrift with me videos and um, I like to do some different types of crafting as well. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you and thank you so much for watching and I hope that you all will just have a wonderful day.